day 370. Joe's out with a bit of blue power. Does look good that tractor. Um, he's off sowing beans. I'm just gonna get this trailer on the mill, load it up with seed, take it to the field, and then uh, leave it there so it's self-sufficient and I can go spray it. Trying to make room in the yard because there's just stuff everywhere again. So I'm just gonna let me hook a maid the other week, get this trailer put down the side of this shed out of the way. So easy when you can see where you're backing it on the front. Move this JPM as well, and windows are dirty, aren't they? Get the uh, screen wash empty. There you go. Pretty good that screen wash, to be fair, on the mirror. Get that down there as well, out the way. Does anyone know why this has uh, two brake couplings? Maybe Howard might know from views. It's got two brake bikes. It's got some bags on now. My dad's just going to put the last two on. And then I'll run this up to the field for Joe, keep him busy for the day. I know Joe's wind is a bit dirty, but he's using GPS. So it means because you can't see where we've done. If you look the other way, you can see exactly where we've done. In a dark line. That's why um, we have to use GPS because you can't see. Because the other set of pallet forks are still off for repair. Joe's gonna load himself up with this hook today. Sewing. See if you know what variety is. It's another good advantage of 10 metre merlots as well. You can just boom straight over, not get anywhere near the drill. There we go. 500 kilo bags in at a time well two of them so it's a ton at a time and we're sowing 210 kilos i think to the hectare so that should do about i don't know five six acres each bag okay, this is the line there where he's drilled so he's drilled all that way not this way but when you turn around you just can't even see it as well because of the way the, the sun's shining so like I say, we're using GPS. It's filled up now, it's just off again now. It's filling up now with fertiliser, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a block of wood on the floor, and that's so I know how far to back up, so when I'm backing up, I just feel the block hit the tyre, and I know when to stop, so I don't go too far and catch the booms on the tanks. Because I know it's got a camera, it's a bit hard to judge still, especially if the sun's in, your, in the camera. So I always put a block of wood down so I can see. This was that last field of barley we sown on the um, banks of the river. You see the stones have come up to the surface because the soil's obviously washed down a bit. Um, so there's quite a few. I mean, they, they could be picked because they're quite near the edge of the field. But I think what I'll do is next time, after it's recovered from the liquid fertilizer, because it can be quite like sort of acidy on the, on the leaves. Um, I don't want to damage the tissue by rolling it, but I will roll it in, in like a week or so just to. Um, encourage it to, to tiller and also push these stones in because we don't want them in the combine. Like to that one there, it's like really stuck up quite high. See it. So in a few weeks, once it gets all of this fertiliser, it'll, it'll be up out of the ground and you won't see them stones. Because if we roll it, it'll push them in and then those that don't push them will just pick up. Gordon there spraying some wheat. Night, 36 metre. Not getting stuck today. Just going through Hale Village now. If you look now, there's the big statue of the child of Hale. People are getting the pictures taken with it. Apparently, it's a um, Everywhere. 
Uh, TJ here for Sugar Beet. Other side on the back. A John Deere for Adam. That's a rare thingy coupler, isn't it? They call them Clank, not Clank couplers. It's alright. Then um, they have a funny name, don't they? Anderson couplers. Oh, yeah, Anderson, why are you These, she wasn't working her. Working aloe, innit? Look at that fits under bridges. It's well, are you? Quick tour around the nightcap. Definitely prefer my cab. And I know that I like yellow paint because the bridge is rest and train is yellow, but I don't think it suits a sprayer. Mustard yellow. Yeah, I prefer the cabin this. I'd had a nice screen in it, but the new one's gonna have a nice screen in This bit here is a bit where the, uh, the geese have eaten it. Again, they're hoping that they won't like the taste of the fertiliser, but if they're anything like the pigeons, it probably won't make much difference to them. I think I've got one, I've got four fields of winter barley left to put liquid on, so I'm gonna try and get it all done today if I can. I've got me all up to stop the wind, you can see. This was a field of potatoes that um, a neighbour was growing and that basically uneconomical to dig. The price of potatoes is totally on the floor, mainly because of the pandemic, because of chip shops, takeaways and restaurants. It's been so wet, they, were, they couldn't get them off in the autumn. They've tried again in the spring. They're not keeping because they've been out all winter. So they've basically just been written off now. So we're gonna drill it with beans. It's a shame though, because it costs about 2,000 pounds an acre to grow potatoes. And they've just been just, just left. And then now we're in a field. This was carrots. Same story here. Um, not really much demand. They're, they're basically a write off again, you know, demand, quality from the weather, different things like that. You know, I think carrots cost about £3,000 an acre. You know, there's, there's 25 acres here that's just had to be written off. So that, about 30 acres of potatoes. Big numbers. It's. Uh, it's it's really affected people in different ways. This pandemic, you know, it, it's, some markets have been up, some markets have been down, and then with the weather, everything comes together. It's heartbreaking to see, you know, all these potatoes just have to be like grubbed up um, and, not, and not actually sold or eaten. So they feel the wheat now, and all the kids are up to there. Uh, trying to work out whether it's worth keeping or not. It's uh, very poor on the headlands because of the weather, it's quite thin in the field. Um, I think it might come round though. Won't be the best of crops, but starting again at this time, uh, spraying it off and then putting barley in. I think it'd probably be better off with wheat. So I think we'll leave it and just give it a bit extra feed. Yeah, maybe we'll just uh, patch up the headlands with some spring wheat and then leave the middle of it because lots of people struggle to get winter corn in this year. So that means that winter wheat, sorry, wheat will be a bit of a premium like it was this last year because it was a wet autumn. So that I expect there'll be a lot of spring barley about. So keeping more wheat in the rotation is better. So I think I'll do that. Looks like someone's got a new roof and decided to put their old roof battens in the field gateway. Luckily I sprayed this field two days ago so I'm not gonna go in for a couple of days but the annoying thing is is it isn't just the wood it's all them nails so even this is the council's land this this side of the gate even if they clear up them nails are still gonna be there um, if it was my land box of matches I'd sort that out and then a, a magnet afterwards but it's just annoying why why can't they just go the tip Adam's just drilling a little bit of a Spring barley with a John Deere while Joe's still out on the air, clay and drew it. Spring beans. A bit of dust as well, it's like what you like to see. 
Look how far tyres have come. That's that's one now on the trailer, and that's what they used to put on two of them. A lot bigger footprint now. People say big sprays are a nightmare in little fields. They're not because you go round them and then one's through the middle and you're finished. This is brilliant. This is some spare winter barley after some beans, so we just need to knock the beans out with a herbicide. You see, it's a bit stressed in places though. It's a bit yellow from the. Uh, so it's been on with a four wheel drive as well. But yeah, here it's a bit yellow and wet, but it's dying a bit, but hopefully it'll recover now, it's got a bit of fertiliser. I pulled into this field, I'd forgotten it was wheat, I thought it was barley because it's behind another one. And I've not been in it since the autumn properly, because everyone else has done this for spreading a different thing. Anyway, looks great. It's the field that have backed the combine into the ditch in back in, I don't know, September when we were there, or, uh, yeah, September when I was cutting the beans. And it's the one I put summer barley on the year before. So summer barley is when I combine winter barley and then I drill it immediately with spring barley to see if I can double crop it in one year. So first year I managed to combine it in November. The second year it just came too wet and never combined it. But for some reason it's totally transformed the field. It used to be a real heavy, sticky, horrible mess. And now this is the best crop of wheat we've ever had on it. Um, so it's something I'm going to keep trying to do because even if we don't harvest the barley and get the two crops a year, at least it does some good to the soil. I don't know what it does, but it definitely does something. Yeah, day 181 is when I back the combine into that ditch there. If anyone wants to go back and watch any new viewers. It was good this week though, I'm quite pleased with that. It's folding up now. I promise to show I promise to show you um my dad back into my sister's tour egg today so I'll, I'll put that on this bit now it's off the CCZ TV cameras from years ago so it's not the best footage um, I wish I had the cameras I've got now because they're a lot better but here it is Yeah, it did a lot of damage, all light damage all over it, but it actually ripped the dashboard open. So it had to have a new dashboard in it as well, so it ended up quite a big job and away for about a month to be repaired. Um, and she's not got any more anyway, she's got my old car. Um, that's probably about it for today. I'm going to edit this while I'm still spraying because I'll probably be going until quite late and it's probably getting a bit long. So um, I'll catch you all tomorrow anyway, and there's, there's an ending from um, my niece that she did. So, and then after that, I've got a number two, I think, that have been sent to me, so I'll put them on as well. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and tell 50,000 of your closest friends, because all they need to be big, and they need to spend more on one now, because it's only an RB55 instead of an RB35.